What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. This is Whiskey in the Six number 41, I believe. So I've been at this for uh, about four months, five months. Um, I've started to do about a video a week. In the beginning, I released a whole bunch, got a little bit overzealous and realized that the cost of it uh, would definitely catch up to me, but I was being a little, like I said, overzealous. Um, thanks to people like my brother Mike who lent me this beauty, the Caribou Crossing Single Barrel by Zazrak Company. It's got the nice maple leaf at the top. Um, I can do videos where I've already experienced the whiskey before and don't have to purchase it myself again in order to do the review. Um, he let me this for a couple weeks now, um, but I've had several bottles of this in the past. When it first came out, it was one of the first Canadian whiskeys that I spent $90 at the time on. For me, well $90 Canadian. In the States when it first came out, it was about 45 bucks. For me, a, a Canadian whiskey that was $90, that was a big deal. Then after this, I started venturing into the higher end Canadian whiskeys. At the time, I was more of a cognac drinker. I'd spend a hundred plus dollars on some scotches, but never on Canadian whiskey at the time. All right, so we're talking a solid six, seven years ago. Um, and that's also because Canadian whiskey tends to be a bit cheaper. Okay, so you don't have, at the time, um, Canadian Club 20 year old was 50 bucks Canadian. So that's, for me, one of the best Canadian whiskeys there are out there. And it was only $50. So I didn't really have to venture out to the $90 range for a Canadian whiskey to get something of high quality. Eventually I'll do a Canadian Club 20 year old as well. I've done the 30 year old as well already. This one I bought probably about, five years ago. So actually, now that I think about it, this is probably closer to eight years old. Uh, not this particular bottle, but I'm talking eight years ago. Anyway, Caribou Crossing by Zazarak Company. Zazarak Company is a large corporation. They are an American corporation. Um, in order for Canadian whiskey to be considered Canadian, it has to be aged and um, aged in Canada, okay, for three years. And it could be a blend of wheat, rye, barley, or corn whiskeys, like we've talked about in the past. This, I, I had an opportunity to talk to a representative from Zazarak Company. Uh, she let me know that there is added color in here. There is chill, freight, uh, chill filtration going on. So it's not your, the purest of substances. Okay, but it's a really good whiskey, okay? The bottle is one of the nicest on the market in my opinion. It's actually similar to some of the, the uh, other bottlings that Zazarak Company has in their bourbon line. Um, but it's a really, really cool bottle. It's got the caribou on the front, the nice uh, maple leaf at the top, and it actually comes in a solid wax seal so you know that it's airtight okay um so there is added color it's chill filtered and is bottled at 40 percent but it is worth every penny that you pay for it and like i've talked about in the past most canadian whiskeys have added color they have been chill filtered. Uh, that's something that hopefully eventually will work its way out. But at the moment, the Canadian whiskey industry continues to produce whiskey that way and there is demand for it. So until the demand dies, they'll continue making things this way. Um, in Scotland, however, distilleries are realizing that a lot of the people that are buying their product really want non chill filtered, they really want no added color and they're doing whatever they can to make that happen, okay? Whether it's a few releases within their line, 
that are Nacho filtered, no added color, or their entire line like uh, Glendronic that's Nacho filtered, no added color, okay? So um, hopefully, eventually, Canadian whiskey will do the same. On the nose. Okay, it's, an, it's not an overly robust nose. You get caramel, there's a little bit of fruitiness in there. You can get the butteriness of like a corn whiskey. I'm assuming there's probably a large portion of corn whiskey in this. Um, because of the amount of bourbon whiskeys that Zazarak Company deals with, they probably rely on their corn spirit heavily in all of their products, which is fine. It's Corn spirit is fantastic if done properly. Okay, so it's very sweet on the nose. You know you're gonna get a sweet dram, uh, but, but like I said, not overly robust. There's a little bit of caramel, maybe a touch of like a pear. Not very much oakiness. Very, very light nose, okay, nothing crazy. Okay, that buttery smoothness from the corn whiskey, definitely prevalent in the taste, all right? Um, it's sweet, some apple, some caramel. The, the palate is actually a lot better than the nose because it's there's a lot more going on. It's not overly complex. It's hard to find blended Canadian whiskeys that haven't been aged very long. There's no age statement on this bottle. That haven't been aged very long, that have an overly robust nose, an overly robust uh, palate. They're usually the standard caramel, apple, that kind of stuff. Um, this is single barrel, so it makes a slight difference than its competitors, okay? Canadian whiskey uh, bottlings are not often single barrel, whereas the Caribou Crossing is. Okay, one more time on the palate. Okay, so if you were served this, you would definitely enjoy it. It's above anything that, like, it's worth the money you pay for it. It's worth the $90 Canadian or the fifty sixty dollars American that you would pay for it um, it's nice to have on your bar it looks good the it comes with the velvet uh, bag probably copying Crown Royal a little bit with the velvet bag but whatever it's cool to have um, overall I'm gonna give this a B it's very good whiskey it's not incredible I wouldn't seek out buying tons of bottles of this but for the price you're paying and the quality you're receiving, it's definitely worth a buy. It's definitely worth a try, okay? Um, so like I said, a solid B. Um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. Check me out on there. You can also uh, stay tuned for my Facebook channel because I'm gonna be getting that up and running very shortly. And the Toronto Raptors play again tonight. This could be their last game, but let's hope it's not. Uh, I'm not a huge basketball fan, but when the Raptors are in the playoffs, being Canada's only team, I have to support. Um, but I'm a huge Leaf fan, and Steven Stamkos is now out of the playoffs, which means there's a good possibility that he might sign with the Toronto Maple Leafs this summer. So what might happen within the months of June and July is Toronto gets two cornerstone players, one in Austin Matthews, who's probably going to be the first overall pick, which Toronto owns, and signing Steven Stamkos in the offseason. If those two things happen, expect to see good things in Toronto in the next few, next few years. Anyway, that's a B. I'm Rob again. This was Whiskey in the Six. Thanks for watching.